and welcome back to the Sussex Handmade Soap Company. I am Anne, one half of the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and Wayne is the other half. And today we are creating number three in our February soap release. We are creating a green tea and cucumber scented soap. It is going to be a three colour design in kind of slanted layers. Each layer is going to be a different colour. We shall be using activated charcoal. We shall be using, ooh, what, ooh, anatto and indigo. And we will be topping with botanicals. Um, this soap will be available on the 1st of February in our shop. And um, I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you about it. I feel like I haven't talked for long enough, but that may just be because normally I talk for too long. Hmm, no. Nope nothing else that crosses my mind so let's just cue that soap making so today before we even get to the actual soap making we've got a little bit of preparation to do because today's soap is a three color design and it actually involves infused olive oil and a few other colorants that i want to put in olive oil portions but because it is three different colors um, so three different layers, each a different colour, we have to make these portions up separately. So no gloves, no goggles at the moment because we haven't even weighed out the lye, we haven't even got to that part yet. This is purely the very, very beginning of the soap. So I have got just the olive oil portion of my soap recipe in these three jugs. I've got one third of the olive oil in each jug and in this jug in the centre, I am using anatto infused olive oil, which is why it's gone this lovely orangey colour. And the soap we are creating will be a green, white and black. So the white portion, we don't need to worry about that one. We can take that one away because we're not adding any colourants into that one. Which leaves us with our black and our green portions. And we are going to add two grams of activated charcoal into this regular olive oil here to create our black layer and we are going to create, no we're not, we are going to add one gram of indigo dye into our anatto infused olive oil and that will hopefully turn this a lovely green shade to create our green portion of the soap. And I'm going to be using this little coffee whisk thingamabob to blend them in really nicely into the oil. It's actually the first time I've used this. I'm hoping it's going to work. If it doesn't, we'll just use the stick blender instead. But if this does work, it'll be great. So I'm just going to go in, turn it on, and just whiz in the activated charcoal until we have got a really nice, well incorporated blend. Cool, it's not very powerful. <laughs> you can tell I got it out of the cheap shop. Okay, this this could take a while, so... Um, I think it's the batteries. It could be the batteries, actually. Yeah, I, did, I didn't have any new batteries. I had to nick them out of a uh, controller. Hmm. Okay, so I've got bored doing it that way because it is not dispersing. I'm going to use the stick blender. It's going to be quicker and easier. So now we've got the real power. That coffee frother was sadly disappointing. I'm gonna use a stick blender now. Right, that was much quicker and much easier. Yeah, that little coffee frother. I'll, I'll try it with some new batteries, but I'm not impressed so far. Now I'm just gonna do the same with the anatto and indigo portion. Whiz it up, help that indigo dye to disperse and hopefully give us a lovely deep green shade. So that's dispersed in there now and you can kind of see on the head of the stick blender the kind of green colour we're going to be hopefully achieving. So now these olive oils have been prepared we are going to melt the rest of our oils together then we're going to portion them out, add the olive oil back into each portion then add the lye, add some scent, layer up some soap, bish bash bosh, all done fantastic. So for this soap we're going to work layer by layer and we are starting with the black portion because that is going to be our lower layer. And here I've got the olive oil and charcoal that I showed you earlier and here we've got all the rest of our oils 
um, melted together and ready to be added to our charcoal portion. So all I'm gonna do is add in the charcoal olive oil into the rest of the oils, scraping down to make sure that I get all of that oil or as much as possible out of the jug. And I'm just gonna quickly test the temperature with my temperature gun to check it's in a range that I'm happy to work with. And it is showing at 110 degrees, which is a little low, but I can work with that. My lye, I've already tested the temperature of, and that's 115 degrees. So we are within five degrees there, so I'm happy to work with that. And we are going to pour the lye water carefully in. Then we're going to use our stick blender to bring this to a medium trace today because we want it to be fairly thick so it sets up nicely in the mould. So now a nice medium trace and we're going to add in our fragrance oil. We are using one third of the fragrance oil or the total fragrance oil weight in this black portion. And this is green tea and cucumber from Brambleberry. And it smells very nice indeed. Um, I was kind of wondering what a green tea scent would smell like, but actually I am getting tea off it, which is kind of bizarre because I didn't think I would. But I am, and I like it, which is even stranger because, you know, I'm not actually the biggest fan of tea. And yes, I can hear the gasp of amazement going up around the globe for a British person to say that they are not a fan of tea. Yeah, I will be a national disgrace for saying that. Uh, I'm very sorry, the stereotype of British people drinking, I don't know, 50 cups of tea a day is not applicable to me because quite literally tea is not my cup of tea. <laughs> right, let's pull in the mould now and get this first layer poured. So today I'm using this little tea towel to actually prop up my mould so that we're going to be pouring at an angle because we want the final soap to have a slanted effect to it. So I am going to pour down along this side and just allow the soap to kind of naturally flow and fill the mould. And you know what else I'm going to say now as well, this is green tea and cucumber. Cucumber, another stereotypical British sandwich filling and I can't stand that either. Cucumber is just yuck. It, it's, it's just not nice. If I ever get invited round to the Queen's house for a uh, high tea and cucumber sandwiches, I will be in trouble because I will not like what's on the menu. But I do like both the smell of cucumber and the smell of tea. So this scent is working for me, but put the actual uh, items in front of me and I would not be eating or drinking them. Don't consume, just have a sniff. <laughs> just have a sniff? A snifter of tea? No, I'd rather have a snifter of brandy. Sniff my cucumber! <laughs> right, there we go, that's all in nicely now. I'm just going to give it a shake and a tap to level it out a bit. She's currently wedged under the mould. <laughs> the Queen is currently wedged under the mould. My nice patriotic British tea towel. Right, so happy enough with that. We're going to set this to one side now. Hopefully that is going to firm up while we work on our next layer, which is what we're going to do now. So layer number two, much the same technique as layer number one. I have got my warmed oils here. I have got my olive oil here. I'm going to tip all of the olive oil into the rest of the oils and for reference the rest of the oils because I always say the rest of the oils and I never say what they are. They are in the description. But just to let you guys know, it is, as well as olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter, castor oil, sweet almond oil, cocoa butter, and have I missed one? Did I say sweet almond sweet oil? Almond. There should be six in total. I can't remember which ones I've said now, but there's six in total and they're in the description. <laughs> Probably more reliable to check the description than rely on me to remember something. 
And these are around about 108, so they are dropping slightly in temperature. We might warm that last portion up again, but that's not such an issue because our lye is actually only 110 degrees now as well. So we will pour that in to our, well, what is going to be our white uncoloured portion. And then as before, we're going to use a stick blender to bring it to a medium trace. Then we shall be adding another third of that green tea and cucumber fragrance. Then we'll be pulling back in the mould. So a nice medium trace going in with that green tea and cucumber fragrance now. Mixing it well with the spatula. I could blend these in with a stick blender, it might work a little better, but I actually kind of like blending fragrance oils in by hand because then you can kind of control how thick the batter gets. I think with a stick blender, sometimes when I blend fragrances in with a stick blender, they thicken up rather more than I would want them to. So I do tend to actually just use a spatula to incorporate my fragrances by hand. And as with all the fragrances that we use, this one is a paraben and phthalate free and is a lovely skin safe fragrance oil. <laughs> Remove the tea bags, Wayne! <laughs> this is what it's like working with Wayne, but I wouldn't change it. <laughs> right, so that is how our mould was, so we can see where we poured it and it's come up at an angle this way. But we want the other, the next layer, sorry, to be going at the opposite angle. So I'm going to turn the mould round and prop it up this way round, which is why we needed this black layer to be nice and firmly set up before we turned it. Because if it wasn't set up, it would all just splodge down, which wouldn't be good. Right. And it is nice and firm, so I don't need to worry about it breaking through or anything. So we're just going to pour a nice, slow, steady stream of this soap. Like so. And I love doing this. I love watching designs kind of coming together. Especially when they're new designs that you kind of come up with and you're trying for the first time seeing if something works or not. Then again, you also get the uh, disappointment when you start doing something and then you realise that it's not going to work and you go halfway through it and put all of that time and effort in. But I think that happens to everybody and it just makes it all the more rewarding when something does go right. Right, time for the shake and tap down to kind of just level this layer out a little. And now it's back to putting this to one side and working on our third and final layer. So it's layer three and you have guessed it, it's going to be created exactly the same way as layers number one and two. This is the layer I'm most excited about because I want to see what kind of shade of green we get, which we won't find out until we've actually brought it to a trace. So the olive oil coloured with the indigo and anatto are going into the rest of our melted warmed oils now. I mean, you know, you guys know the drill by now, you've just watched me do it twice. Lie into oils. For reference, these ones were both actually around about 106 degrees, both the lye and the oils. So yeah, coming down in temperature, because obviously this lot has been sitting for a little while. Um, we have kept it on the heat, the uh, oils, just on a gentle heat, but the lye has just been cooling down by itself. So we have got a little lower in temperature, but it's still a temperature I'm happy to work with. Right. Let's come to a medium trace. And would you just look at that? Uh, I don't know quite how well the camera is going to show the true colour of this, but I think that is a really gorgeous green and it really kind of brings together the whole green tea and cucumber fragrance idea. And speaking of green tea and cucumber, the last portion of the fragrance oil, so 13.3 grams going in now. So we can ditch the tea towel now because for this final layer we want the mould to be flat. And all I'm going to do, as you may have guessed, is just gently pour 
this final layer in. I'm, I'm going over the spatula. Um, this white layer looks a little bit less set up than the black layer, but I really don't think that the green would break through it, but better safe than sorry. Hence why I'm going over the spatula. So, I've divulged today my uh, very un-British dislike for tea and cucumber. What I want to know is wherever the, in the world you are, are there any sort of traditionally, you know, traditional, stereotypical dishes or things that you don't like? So, you know, tell me something that is stereotypical about your country that you don't like food wise or drink wise or, you know, I want to know. I want to know about these other traditional customs and foods and things across the globe because I find that kind of stuff interesting. So tell me, fill my comments box with knowledge. Whee! I'm loving the colour of this green. So pretty. One would say it's probably British Racing Green. British Racing Green? I would tend to disagree. I think British Racing Green is a bit more... Darker? Darker, that's the word. <laughs> I do like British Racing Green though. It's a nice colour. Right, now we have filled this up. We will give it the shake and the tap down. And then we will decorate the top with some pretty botanicals today that I have got to one side, ready and waiting. So we are back and our soap is now looking nice and firm and we are going to texture the top. We are going to be using my old favourite, the spoon, to texture half the soap lengthways with the back of the spoon sort of swirl technique, just pulling up and stopping, I suppose, just slightly past the middle. I'm just gonna do this all the way down the soap, just creating some nice sort of peaks in the middle. And then for the other side, I've got some botanicals. And I know in a lot of my soaps, I do this design on both sides. So I thought we'd go for a little bit of variation and just have this kind of texturing technique down one side of the soap for a change. Cause you know, I want something a little bit different. And I think that this will work. I hope it's going to work. So now I have got some little linden leaves and flower buds, which I have sort of crushed up by hand and tried to remove as much stalk as possible because you don't really want stalky bits in the soap, but these did have quite a lot of them. So there may be the odd one here or there. And I'm just going to sprinkle them down this side of the soap, the untextured side. Yeah, there's a stalky bit there. Don't want that in. I might go over this after the video has been filmed and just pick out some of those stalky bits with some tweezers because you guys don't want to watch me picking a stalk off of soap with tweezers. That would not be exciting viewing. Um, if you do purchase one of these, there may be the odd stalky bit. Sorry about that. That'll just be me deciding that I cannot get every single bit of stalk off the soap but they will wash off the first time you use the soap. These are purely a decorative. I think we need a few more at this end. And I'm just gonna go along now and just gently press them onto the soap. Obviously I'm still wearing my gloves. Well, I just wanna make sure that they are going to stick nicely. I don't want them all falling off when we cut the soap because that would be pointless and a waste of money and time. So just very gently pressing them down onto the soap. I say these are linden leaves but I like to imagine that they represent tea leaves. I suppose I could have used actual tea leaves but these look pretty and I like how they look. <laughs> And finally, we have got some juniper berries. Juniper berries make gin. Gin is one thing that I do like. And to be honest, I can even stomach a cucumber gin. So, you know, take from that what you will. And these berries are going to decorate kind of 
where the peaks are. I'm going to be careful that I am placing them in the centre of the bars because I don't really want them to be chopped through. Needless to say, some of them will end up getting chopped because I'm rubbish at placing things equally. But I'm going to do my best. And I'm just going to sort of place two per bar relatively close to each other trying as I say my best to avoid those cutting lines this isn't the easiest thing to do whilst wearing gloves definitely makes it harder getting those berries where I want them to be but better have a little bit of difficulty placing berries than to end up with burnt fizzy fingers. <laughs> no one wants burnt fizzy fingers. Right, I'm gonna either cut this bit now or speed it up because this could take me a little bit of time getting these all placed. Look, I'm going off track already. Look, I'm not putting them in my cutting lines properly. Oh, let's just see what happens. So they are all on now and I've done my best to sort out the ones I messed up here where I went over my cutting lines but I've got a sneaking suspicion that when we cut it tomorrow we're still going to end up chopping some of them but hopefully the majority will survive. So here we go, here is our green tea and cucumber scented loaf, three colours on a slant, hopefully going to look pretty when we cut it tomorrow. So you will see me then for the cut. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. So we have unmoulded now and I have got this loaf on the soap cutter. I have lined it up as best as I can to avoid these juniper berries getting cut. Um, there are a few that don't appear to have been placed entirely correctly so will probably be chopped but we're going to end up with at least half the bar with unchopped berries, so uh, let's just get stuck in and slice up this bar. Fairly firm today, which is a good thing. So let's take this bar here from the middle and have a look at the inside. So here is today's design. We have got our black layer, our white layer and our green layer. And I'm really happy with both the design and how the colours have actually turned out as well. On the top we have got the little juniper berries and linden leaves decorating. And I am pleased to report that it appears that only one bar has actually had a berry that has been slightly cut. All of the others somehow managed to escape. I can smell the green tea and cucumber scent as well. It really does smell like tea. Um, and it almost smells warm, which is a really strange thing to say, but it's almost got a warming sort of scent to it. Um, and it does just smell like a cup of tea. So if you like the smell of a cup of tea mixed with cucumber, which admittedly sounds a little strange, then you probably like this. But believe me, the scent works and it's definitely... Um, very different to some of our normal scents, but also a very nice, fresh, clean scent. So, overall, happy! So these are today's soaps, and I am pretty happy with how they've turned out. I'm liking the colours, I'm loving the green we've achieved, and the smell, I'm still really enjoying. And it is still confusing me over how something that is like a bar of soap can smell, in some ways, so similar to a cup of tea and in other ways so very different and I'm never ever going to be able to accurately, just accurately describe this fragrance so if you want to know what it smells like I suppose you're kind of just going to have to buy one there's a nice little plug for our shop which you can find just here if you want to um, these will be available on the 1st of February um, along with the other soaps that we're making throughout January um, so yeah visit us there if you want to and if you enjoy our videos on here, please do give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave us a comment. We love reading all of your comments and hearing what you guys are getting up to and also what you guys would like to see us do in our channel because we are always looking for ideas 
and things that we can attempt. Uh, and sometimes we get ideas that we think are really good and we don't have the time at the minute to film them, but we put them up in the old memory bank and, you know, when we're looking for something to do, maybe even months down the line, we might pull one of those ideas out and do it. So leave your comments telling us things you'd like to see and then hopefully at some point in 2021 we might be able to get around to doing some of those videos. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week for the last of our February releases. It's going to be a good one. It's a fairly simple design. There's no botanicals or piping or things like that on it but it is a really pretty design. So tune in for that one and we shall see you then. Enjoy the rest of your week and bye. Ha <laughs> ha